Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. In this project, I'll be showing you one of my favorite techniques, which is using offset to create faux leather keychain designs in Cricut Design Space. This is a technique I use a lot. I create a lot of faux leather earrings and a lot of faux leather keychains. So I'm really excited to share this one with you. So if you're ready to learn how to use offset to take your Cricut crafting to the next level, let's get started. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to show you how to create a simple layered faux leather keychain using just Design Space to design the keychain and then cut it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the Shapes tool and I will choose a very basic shape. It's available for free in Design Space. So here's my heart and it comes in as black, but we can recolor it if we'd like. Keep in mind that it doesn't matter what color it is in Design Space because you will be cutting from the desired color materials of your choice. So it is important before we start to adjust the size slightly of our design because when we start adding offsets, which are basically outlines, if we add outlines to a much larger shape and then reduce that shape, then it will also make the outlines out of proportion in the new smaller size. So let me reduce the size of this a little bit. So as we add those offsets, then we'll get closer to that two inch width again. So you can resize this two different ways. Right up here in the width box, in the top menu bar, I can type 1.5 and that will make it one and a half inches wide. You can also drag here with your sliders and get it to the size that you wanna start with. So this is a better start to begin creating outlines or offsets for our shape. So to create an offset, you'll click up here on offset. If you've used offset before, this distance might be the last distance that you used, or it could be whatever Cricut defaults to. Mine is 0.15 because that's the last offset that I used, but you can easily adjust this again, either by typing here in the box or by dragging the slider. So you see, as I drag the slider bigger, it makes the outline bigger. If you keep it close to the shape, the outline more resembles the original shape, when you get it really big, it starts to blur out and lose some of that detail. So keep that in mind when you are adding offsets. Also, you can add an offset that is an inside offset. So you can see the shape is getting smaller and smaller. What I want to do is add external outlines. So I'm going to keep my offset on the outside portion here of the screen. Also, I wanted to point out you have two different options for your corners. It won't be very noticeable here because the shape is mostly rounded, but if you keep an eye right down here on the bottom point of the heart, you can see what happens when I change the corner to the sharp corner. See how that sharp corner happens there? I prefer rounded corners for this design, so I'll keep that rounded. So I like the 0.15 distance, but it's up to you. It's important that you click apply. If you don't click apply, your offset will disappear. If I click apply, then Design Space will create the offset and you can see it here in the layers panel. It's now black. And if we wanted to, we could drag this top part away and you can see that this is a full complete heart. Okay, so we have our two layers here again. Let me just recolor this to a different color. Again, it doesn't really matter what the colors are. There we go. I'm going to create one more offset. So this heart will cut from heat transfer vinyl. So will this one. And then I'm going to create one more that will cut from heat transfer vinyl. Again, this is the same distance. So if you want your outlines to be the same size and evenly spaced, then that's how you do that. Or you can adjust the size. So remember to click apply so that it actually creates your offset. And we'll change that color again. There we go. So now I have three layers of heat transfer vinyl, which will be layered on top of faux leather. So let's create now the faux leather base of our keychain. The way we do that is we create one more offset. Let's just keep that to the 1.5. There we go. Remember to click apply. And this one I'm going to make white because my faux leather keychain base will be white at the bottom. So let's select all of our layers and see our size. So now our heart that started out at one and a half inches wide has now grown to 2.4. And we wanna keep our keychain to two inches wide. So I'll go right up here in the size box again and I'll just change the width to two inches. There we go. 
So the way these keychains work is it's going to be a fold over keychain. So what I want to do is duplicate this entire set of hearts. And I'll click on duplicate. And there we go, that creates our second set of hearts. And what I need to do is flip this because this keychain will fold over. So these two, the front and the back need to be opposites. So when I fold them, then they will fold correctly. So let me click on flip vertical and that does that for us. Now what I'm going to do is create a small little bridge piece of faux leather here that will hold the key ring when we fold over the keychain shape. So let's go back to the shapes panel. I'll just click a square. I'll make it white. And then what I want to do is drag my shape. Again, I can drag or I can type it up here in the box. I want it to be half an inch wide and two inches tall. There we go. So now what I want to do is drag this over here. Don't worry about centering them yet. We will do that in just a moment. So what I'm doing now is adjusting the hearts so that the edge of the rectangle is touching the white part, the white layer of both of the hearts. Let me move this to the back. I'll click on Arrange, Send to the back, and now you can see where that shape is. So when we fold these hearts over, they're going to perfectly line up and our little key ring will be right here in the middle. Okay, so the next thing that's very important to do is to select all of our shapes and we want to center them so that when we fold over the keychain, the two halves line up perfectly. And I wanna click center horizontally. There we go. So the last really important step is to combine the bottom faux leather shape so they will cut all from one piece. So I've clicked on that rectangle. I'm going to hold shift and select all of those bottom white heart layers. You can confirm what layers are selected here in the layers panel. And then I'm going to click on combine and I'm going to weld those together. So now the shapes will be one large shape. You could see them here. Here on the layers panel, you could see it's on the top. So it's covering the heart layers, but I can just drag that down. And then again, we can see how our keychain is set up. So that's how we make our heart. Let me show you how we get it ready to cut in Design Space. So I'll click the Make It button. And I'm loading my materials on a mat. And Design Space will separate all of our different colored materials onto their own mats. So because heat transfer vinyl and faux leather cut in reverse, it's important to mirror each mat so I'll click on each mat and toggle that mirror button on. Again, it doesn't matter what color the mats are because you'll cut them from the heat transfer vinyl of your choice. And what I like to do is just drag my shapes apart from the edges and from each other just a little bit. There we go. And I always cut the faux leather mat first so I'll make sure I'm back on that one. I'll click continue. For this faux leather mat, I like to use the faux leather paper thin setting. This setting is available on all of the current Cricut machines. If you don't have this setting bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can find this material setting in search. And for the heat transfer vinyl layers, I will cut those according to the manufacturer's recommended cut settings for those heat transfer vinyls. So I might use glitter vinyl, I might use regular vinyl, or I might use foil iron-on. Just follow those manufacturer's recommendations. So now we'll hop over to my overhead camera and I'll show you how to get our layers cut out and our keychain assembled. So I've already gone ahead and trimmed my faux leather down to a smaller size, which I noted in the matte preview screen. Looks like my keychain shape is going to be about six inches tall and three inches wide. I just cut it off of this roll and whatever I have left at the bottom, I'll save and use for earrings or another project with faux leather scraps. I'm just placing the faux leather pretty side down on a purple strong grip cutting mat and I'm going to use some blue painter's tape to tape the faux leather down on all sides. Now this blue painter's tape, I reuse it. So these are just pieces that I've used before and I've saved them and I'm just applying them again. You could use the blue painter's tape several times before you need to 
throw them away. So I have the faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure all set to go with my Cricut. I'll just load the mat and begin the cut. Once the cut's complete, I like to use a sharp weeding tool and just lift up the edge of the cut to see if the cut went all the way through. And this one looks like it did, but if it didn't, you can just press the cut button again and it will rerun the cut for you one more time. This one looks good. And I'll just remove that shape and show you what I mean about the fold over style. So our key ring is gonna go here and then we'll just fold this over like that and we'll have our heat transfer vinyl hearts on both sides. Now let's go ahead and cut out our heat transfer vinyl mats and then I'll show you how to assemble the keychain. So I just have some scraps in my little vinyl scrap container and I have my green standard grip cutting mat. I am using three layers of heat transfer vinyl. One of them will be glitter. So I wanna put the glitter one on top so that I'm not layering other heat transfer vinyls on top of glitter just to help keep our vinyl layers lasting long. So what I'll do is cut out these three heat transfer vinyl layers. I'll weed out the excess vinyl and then I'll show you how to press and glue the keychain. So I have all of my heat transfer vinyl layers cut and weeded. I'm going to trim them apart and then get ready to show you how to press these onto the faux leather keychain and then we'll glue it together. So I'm ready to assemble our keychain and what I have is my heat pressing pad ready to go to protect my surface. I have a small cover sheet. This is a Teflon sheet trimmed down to size. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. I have my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting. You could also use a regular Easy Press set to about 265 degrees. I have my faux leather keychain base here and what I'm going to do is begin by choosing the largest heart which will go on the bottom just sort of lining it up so that there's a nice even edge of white all around that heart. I'm sort of holding it in place so it doesn't move. I'm gonna cover it with my little cover sheet and I'm going to press for about 10 seconds. If you're using an Easy Press Mini like I am, my habit is to move it around and place like an iron, but that's not necessary. For a traditional Easy Press, you would just place it down. So you can do the same with the Easy Press Mini. It's up to you. So I'll remove my little cover sheet and I will slowly begin to peel back that clear cover sheet layer of the vinyl. If it doesn't peel back cleanly or if the vinyl lifts up, just place this right back down and press again for a few more seconds. But that looks pretty good. So now we'll turn it around and we'll repeat on the other side of the heart. So again, I'll just peel back that little cover sheet. And that looks good. So now we'll add our next layer. Again, just try to center it neatly and line it up so that there is an even outline of that bottom layer showing through. So now that we've pressed all of our vinyl layers, I do like to repeat pressing one more time now that all of those clear cover sheets protecting the vinyl layers are removed. So I'm just going to recover and press for just four to five seconds on each side. And now I want this to cool flat. The faux leather is quite warm. So I'm just going to place it on my work surface and then put my heat pressing pad on top just to help it cool flat. So the other items we'll need are some craft glue. I'm using some Fabri-Tac, but you could also use Barely Art glue or any other good fabric glue or craft glue you have. Also, I'll be using some tassels and key rings. The key rings that I'm using are split key rings. 
And I like these because they're a nice size. These come in this pretty brass color or also that sort of silver finish. Just keep in mind if you're matching it up to a tassel that the tassels have different colors on the top and you'll wanna match up your tassel top to the metal color on your key ring. I have some little curved scissors that I can use to trim up the edges of my faux leather keychain if necessary. I also have a nice heavy book. So our keychain has cooled nice and flat. And the first thing I want to do is take my little key ring and just thread it on the keychain shape so that it's in position before we glue. And I'm just going to apply my fabric glue all over the back of one of the shapes. It doesn't need to go on the back of the other shape and it also doesn't need to go on that bridge shape. Just the back of one of the hearts. I'm getting close to the edge but not all the way to the edge. And that's because when we press these two halves down, the glue will seep to the edge and we'll get a nice firm seal. So I'm just gonna fold over like this. That looks pretty good. You may have some little stray fuzzies. You can either use your scissors now and trim those up or you can do that after this dries. So the next step is to put a heavy book over our keychain for about an hour and that'll help us get a really nice seal. So now that our keychain has had some time to dry, we can remove our book and then you can see how you get that really nice tight seal all the way around the faux leather keychain. And then our little bridge or that little tab holds our key ring in place. So now we can add an optional tassel and I'm just going to do that using a 10 millimeter jump ring. Again, in that matching metal, the little faux suede tassels, these are from Amazon. These have little hooks little loops, but the loop is not large enough to slide directly onto the key ring. So you'll need a jump ring to attach. So we'll just pick which color tassel we want to use. I think that's kind of cute. And then we'll just use pliers and open up that jump ring to slide on the tassel. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this project and you're going to try faux leather crafting yourself. If you did like this project and you want to learn more, I have so many great tutorials on my YouTube channel that I would love for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.